I awoke this morning with a dull ache in my head. I took two Exedrin and went about my day. It's probably due to the change in pressure outside. It should pass as the day goes by. Eight hours and four Exedrin later, the pain has greatly intensified. I have made plans to go see the doctor later. The doctor asks me some questions and tells me that if the pain should intensify, that she would recommend an MRI. I agree. In the meantime, she writes me out a prescription for Dilooxidin. She explains that this medicine is fairly new and warns me of the side effects, including fatigue, increased appetite, lucid dreams, and in rare cases, auditory hallucinations, and death. As soon as I get my prescription filled, I take one as directed. Within five minutes, the pain in my head has lessened greatly. Within ten, my headache is completely gone. I get ready for bed and power down my laptop. I can hear the bathroom sink dripping. I didn't notice it before and I get up to turn it off. I drift off to sleep, but I am awoken a few hours later by the sound of the bathroom sink dripping again. I turn it off and assume that a valve must be loose. I can't fix it right now, so I place a towel in the basin to muffle the noise. I fall back to sleep when I hear a sound like someone letting out a sigh coming from the bathroom. I'm startled and my eyes pop open. I lay in my bed listening. I hear water trickle onto the porcelain. Trip. 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 I take a breath and make my way into the bathroom. I turn on the light to find that the faucet is completely shut off and the towel is still in the basin. I touch it. It's barely wet. I chalk it up to the side effects of the diloxidin and head back to sleep. The next morning, I wake up and take another pill as recommended. I notice that I don't have a headache and that I'm no longer hearing things. Still, I tell my doctor after work. The doctor said not to worry too much about the hallucinations. She said that they weren't that bad. But if they get worse, then maybe I should cut back on the medication. That night, I unwind by reading the Amber Chronicles. I was well within the fifth chapter when I started hearing noises again. In the kitchen, I hear a clack, 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 as the sound of footsteps move across the floor. I push it out of my mind and continue reading. As I continue to read, I begin to hear a faint static come from the direction I heard the footsteps. I put the book down and listen. Soon, the static becomes whispers, and I'm able to distinguish two different voices, but I can't make out what they're saying. I again tell myself that it's just the medicine, but nonetheless, I go cautiously into the kitchen to check. I find nothing there. I go to the bathroom to brush my teeth and get ready for bed. As I'm in there, out of the corner of my eye, I see something brown and lanky move past the doorway. My heart 
gets caught in my throat. I rationalized that it was just due to the medication, but soon realized that nothing was mentioned about visual hallucinations. Cold beads of sweat begin to form on my body, and my hands begin to tremble. With trepidation, I peer my head around the doorframe, hoping that nothing will be there. My eyes peer into the darkness of the hallway, searching. Then, I see it. Hulking at the end of the hallway, tall and brown and hunched over, its presence menacing. I notice that it's turned the other way and that it can't see me. I continue to stare at it until I notice something strange about it. Something familiar. I turn on the hallway light and I sigh in relief. It was just the coat rack. I decide to go to bed but leave the hallway light on. When I awoke the next morning, I forgot to take my medicine and decided to call into work. I have no headaches and I don't experience any hallucinations. I spend the day lying in bed and listening to the silence. It's been seven days since I stopped taking the medicine and everything is still normal. I had a sinus headache a few days ago, but that was it. It would now seem that I no longer need the medication. If this is the case, then I can be done with these pills and not have to worry about any more side effects. I'll hold on to the pills for a couple more days, and if I'm still doing well, I will flush them. My head is killing me. It's worse than it's ever been. I lie curled up in a fetal position in my bed in the pitch blackness with my hands cupping my head. I've thrown up three times already. I don't know if I should take the medicine, but I've been like this for I don't know how long. And I'm afraid that the pain might kill me. I down the pill with a glass of water. It's hard to keep from throwing up again. Almost immediately, the pain subsides and I can function again. I promptly call my doctor to set a scan at a local hospital. The scan comes back normal. No dark spots or swelling. Nothing to indicate what is causing the headaches. While I'm there, I ask the attending physician if there's anything else he could prescribe me with for my headaches. He writes me out a prescription for amotriptan and sends me on my way. I contemplate throwing the dioxidin away, but change my mind in case the amotriptan doesn't work. Two days now, and everything is going better than expected. Not only are my headaches gone, but I'm in an overall better mood. I'm also more actively participating during work meetings. Fifth day now, and things are getting weird again. Despite not taking any of the diluoxidin, I'm starting to experience auditory hallucinations. I can hear voices throughout my house. They sound like the low hums of television conversations in another room, intermingled with growls. If I concentrate, I can count them. One, two, three, four, four. That's how many of them are moving around out there, waiting. They can only move in the shadows. I don't even know if they're real. It wouldn't surprise me if the almotriptan caused hallucinations. I 
called the doctor who prescribed me the almotriptan and asked him if it's known to cause any hallucinations. He says that it doesn't. He says that it doesn't. Not fully satisfied with the doctor's answer, I visit forms and try to discern whether or not anyone else has experienced any types of hallucinations while on the drug. The most that I got was that a few people got dizzy or nauseated. I call my doctor and I tell her about the almotriptan I'm taking and the hallucinations I'm having. She tells me that there might be still some diloxidin in my system and that everything should be cleared up as the time progresses. In the meantime, I am told to go get blood work done to see if the drug is still in my system and to also speak with the psychiatrist. I agree, and after I hang up with her, I make an appointment with a local clinical shrink. I have my lab work done and go to see the shrink. We speak about the hallucinations I've been having, and he gives me some exercises to do when the hallucinations occur. He also writes me a prescription for clozapine. He tells me that it's for people with schizophrenia, but that it should work on my situation. I don't like the idea of taking more pills, but if it will stop the hallucinations, I'll try it. Despite taking the pills and seeing tall, brown, slender, hulking shapes move around my house out of my peripheral vision, I rationalize that the medicine needs a week to fully take effect. I just wish I could do something about the sound of water dripping in the sink. I know that the sounds I'm hearing aren't real. The footsteps, the voices, the water dripping in the sink. But if I were to apply a physical solution to a mental problem, it might eliminate some of the hallucinations I'm having. The first thing that I do is turn off the water under the bathroom sink. The dripping stops. Now, I must figure out a way to stop the footsteps. If I tell the hallucinations to leave, maybe they'll no longer bother me. It's unlikely, but it's worth a shot. I can hear them in the living room, a mixture of low, guttural voices and the sloshing wet sounds. I step out into the hallway and peer into the darkness. I can see four of the brown things hunched over in the living room, their backs scraping the ceiling, long slender arms that come past their knees, and the sound of saliva dripping from their mouths. I tell myself that it's just the coat rack and reach over to turn on the light. As I do so, my phone vibrates in my pocket. I answer it. Hello? Hi Mark, this is Dr. Jacobs. I've received the results from your lab work, but there is no trace of dilooxidin in your blood. I stand there, in horror, looking at the things in my living room.